Jesus, we crown you. This, this evening, we crown you with our love. Yes. You know, as many will be walking this National Mall, one of the busiest weekends of the year in Washington, D.C., they're all going to ask the question, why? Why this extravagance? Why the tents? If you walk this mall at 3 o'clock this morning, tomorrow morning, in the middle of the night, there's going to be over 50 tents filled with songs and prayers and declarations of Jesus' reality. You come back at 5 o'clock in the morning, and there's going to be tents filled with songs and prayers and declarations. I believe that this week is a signpost to our nation. We've gathered around the invisible God. We've gathered around the worth of Jesus. And we believe he's going to inhabit the praises of his people. He's going to respond to the cries. And something historic is going to happen this weekend that eyes not seen and ears not heard. And we're here to declare it's a new day. It's an awakening of the dawn in this nation. Jesus is riding into our nation's capital in all of his glory, in all of his splendor. Jesus, you are riding in on the praises of your people. I want to say, you know, I know many of you have given it's been a great cost to get here. It's not easy to get to Washington, D.C. You come from all across this nation, all 50 states, and even other nations are here. And more will continue to come throughout these four days. But I want to say, just before you and before the Lord, the cost of doing this moment is not the reason to not do it. It's actually part of the reason to do it. Because we want to pour out on Jesus during these next four days such an offering of love that it's irresistible to him. That he would pour out his spirit like we've never seen on our nation. I believe these are going to be tents not just of worship and prayer, but they're going to be tents of glory this weekend. I want to encourage you, get ready to come face to face with Jesus this week. I want to say to Washington, D.C., get ready to meet face to face and heart to heart with the glorified, beautiful Son of God, the one that we love, the one that is alone worthy of not just 58 tents 24 hours a day, but of all the nations of the earth to sing a song of adoration and worship. We declare His worth. So we have a remarkable story. How many of you know God is a great storyteller? Jesus is a great story writer. He's written a story that we're just in the middle of a drama that's been in his heart before anybody in this field on this National Mall was even breathing. And amazing things have happened even to get us to this point. We've had dreams that the Lord has given us. We've had multiple people having the same dream from the Lord. We've had many things happen that have led us to this point. But I want to say we're not fundamentally here just because we had uh, stories and dreams and the Holy Spirit did things to guide us and lead us. But right at the core, we're not just here because David or some other person had a dream. That's, that's how God led us the right direction. But I want to say boldly, we are here today to declare to this nation, to the powers of the air, the supremacy of Jesus Christ in all things. We're here to declare the worth and the beauty and the dazzling glory. And we're here to say with the angels, there is no one like him in heaven or on earth or under the earth or in any other place. We declare Jesus' name is altogether worthy, altogether beautiful. And we sing it and we shout it and we pray it until heaven begins to come down and fill our nation with a sound that eyes not seen and an ears not heard. And so we declare the worth and the splendor.
splendor of Jesus. We're here to declare and to throw one of the most unusual and audacious celebrations and declarations of Christ Jesus beauty that's ever happened on the National Mall. How many of you know, without attempting to hype anything, that we're part of something historic this week? Never before has there been 58 tents, day and night, 24 hours a day in worship, in prayer. And we believe that Jesus is leading a procession right now. So number one, we are here to declare the worth and beauty and splendor of Christ Jesus. We're going to celebrate him. You know, I was walking this mall yesterday, and people were beginning to ask. They were coming out of museums, and they were asking, what on earth is going on? As they're walking by tent after tent after tent after tent after tent after tent. They're saying, what on earth is this? One of them said to me this. They said, I thought maybe this was another presidential inauguration or something. And I turned and I said, there's a king above every other king. And he's real. And he's alive. And he's going to move at the sound of your voice today. See, that's the thing. This stage right here is not the gathering this week. You are the gathering. You are the offering. You are the sound. And you are the song, the, the living sacrifice. See, we're not here just to present music and sounds, but we're presenting our very bodies today, this week, as a living sacrifice. And God always, he still sends fire on sacrifice. So number one, we're here to declare with heaven the worth and the splendor of Christ Jesus. Number two, we are on a rescue mission to a generation and to a nation. You know, when God spoke to us to do this, these dates in 2017, we were wrestling with when to do this gathering. And I, I wasn't sure, and we were praying. I was with one of my spiritual fathers who come out here in a minute, Lou Engel, we were in a meeting, and he said, our next step is to talk to my friend Chris about when to do this gathering. And I said, okay. I dropped him off at an airport in Atlanta. I mean, at a conference in Atlanta. I drove to the Atlanta airport. I'm standing in line for my flight, and I look up, and three feet in front of me, Chris is standing there. Lou's final words to me that day were, our next step is to talk to Chris. And I look up, and by a sovereign encounter, he's standing there in front of me. And he's on my flight. He lived in Kansas City. I lived in Virginia. It was a miracle. And here we are. We're about to board this flight. And we, we're, we're actually on the flight. And he says, he says, I believe the Holy Spirit says it has to be 2017. Now, we were thinking of 2018, but I knew in that moment, in many other ways as well, God began to confirm this time. And what a critical hour for our nation right now. All across this nation, there's challenges going on. The worst mass shooting in the history of our nation was this past week. We're seeing natural crisis and disaster. But in the middle of it, what better response than to fall on our face, not just for one day, not just for a few hours, but for four days, 24 hours a day, until Jesus shifts our nation, until a great awakening breaks out, until revival begins to touch every sphere of society. We're here because we know he moves at the sound of our voice. And he, will, he won't delay when the elect cry out, Day and night, Jesus said in Luke chapter 18. He said, when the elect, that's you, cry out day and night, justice will come speedily. So number one, we're here because of Jesus' extravagant beauty and his worth. It's an audacious, bold, public celebration of Jesus. It's a Jesus movement. 
Number two, this is a rescue mission to a generation. How many of you know God's ways are not our ways? And when God wants to turn a nation, he calls us to turn to him with all of our hearts. He calls us to prayer. He calls us to repentance. And so this is a sacred assembly this week. God is going to answer the cries that come out of this field. He's going to respond and release justice. Number three, I believe this. This is a staging ground. This really isn't about these four days. But this is a movement that far transcends these four days. And I don't just mean awake in the dawn. I mean the movement that Jesus is leading all across the nation. Is there anyone that would dare to believe that we've prayed for revival for all of these years? That there are moments where by faith you step in to become the answer to the prayers you've been contending for for decades. I believe this is a staging ground. I believe that tents are going to fill America. I believe that we're going to see every state capital and hundreds of campuses all across America in 2018 covered with a song and a sound and a proclamation of the gospel that literally touches hundreds of thousands, probably millions. So this isn't an end these four days. This is a launching pad. This is a greenhouse. This is a staging ground for day and night worship to fill the earth. You know, 20 years ago this week, over a million men gathered on this mall for the Stand in the Gap Promise Keepers event. We didn't realize when we booked these dates that we, we by divine accident, we booked the same week as the mil, over a million men gathered right here on this mall. And they contended day and night or throughout the day for God to intervene on behalf of our nation. I believe that we're in a storyline that's bigger than any of us. Who would have thought 20 years later there would be another gathering on the National Mall and this time 58 tents would be singing and praying 24 hours a day? How many of you know God's ways are not our ways? Come on. You know those elders in heaven, those 24 elders. What do they have in their hands? They've got harps. They've got musical instruments. And they have bowls, which are the prayers, your prayers, the prayers of the saints. These are the elders of heaven. These are ones that have authority. They're seated on these 24 thrones right there in that eternal throne room. And they have musical instruments and prayers in their hands. What does that tell you about the government of heaven? This is a governmental gathering this week. The songs and the prayers of the saints can turn the tide of history. And we want to gather with that kind of faith. So we want to invite you this week, not just to bring your song, but to bring your heart. Beloved, let's rend our heart for four days. Let's bring a sacrifice of love. Let's declare, my worship is not just my song. My worship is all of me. I'm presenting my body as a living sacrifice this week. Holy and acceptable as a reasonable act of worship. So we're here as the family. And I know we're here from every state. If I had time, in a minute, we're going to call all our state coordinators up. And we're going to pray and consecrate these tents to the Lord. But I want to say, it's critical to the Lord that the whole family comes together. Every good mother and father that's hosting a Thanksgiving dinner goes, we don't start eating till everybody's at the table. And I believe this is a moment where the, the streams are coming together. The races and ethnicities are coming together around the worth of Jesus. 
because this is a family gathering. But when God gathers his family, it's also a governmental gathering. It has authority to shift something. I want to tell you guys a story really quickly. So many stories that could be told, but a couple, about a year and a half ago, December of 2014, a friend of mine came in my office and he threw $444 on my desk. How many of you know it's a good day already? And he said, he said, I believe the Lord is saying you're in a 444-day transition, and God's going to give you clarity of your assignment. And he's going to speak to you out of 444 in the Bible. Now, I'm not like a numbers guy. I just, I literally went, I don't have any idea what you're talking about right now. But I appreciate the $444. A couple of weeks later, a friend of mine has this dream from the Lord where he sees this worship gathering. And the glory of God is resting on the people. And he looks at his watch and it's 444 and he wakes up. He's jolted awake and the presence of the Lord is filling his room. And he tells me about it the next day and a couple weeks later, another friend of mine has a dream. And in this dream, I'm preaching on Ezekiel 44.4, which is a passage where the glory of God fills the temple. And someone walks up to him in the stream and says, hey, have you heard the new message that David's preaching? He goes, no. He says, it's the call of the Neverite. He says, oh, you mean Nazarite. He goes, no, it's the call of the Neverite. It's those that never let the fire on the altar go out. They never cease saying, holy, holy, holy. And they never leave the tent of meeting. And he goes, the Lord is training a whole generation in how to host his presence in cities. How to gather around the worth of Christ. Publicly, boldly, audaciously, courageously until he comes. Beloved, I want to submit to you. I believe this week that we're in a moment where there's a holy procession going on that our eyes can't see in the natural there are chariots of God that are 10,000 by 10,000. And God, in his wisdom, is committed to worship and prayer day and night, being right in the middle of how he's going to execute his will in the nations of the earth. Isn't that amazing? And so we're here to see heaven invade this city. To see heaven invade our nation and heaven invade the nations of the earth. I believe these tents are going to be tents of glory. I want to ask this question. Is there anybody really hungry this week? Come on, you didn't come here just to see the band on a platform. Is there anybody that's absolutely desperate this week? I want to read this prophecy really quickly. Then I want to read a scripture. Then I'm going to have Papa Luke come up here. This is a word that someone had in 2004, a lady named Jill Austin. She says this, all of a sudden, what I kept seeing was these tents. And the Lord said, tent of glory. He says, I'm going to tabernacle. I am going to tabernacle. What I saw was this tent of glory. Tent of glory. I keep seeing a tent city. I kept seeing a warehouse over this tent, and this warehouse has body parts in it. And they're coming down. I see new legs. The Lord says, I'm going to heal crippling diseases. I'm going to open blind eyes. I'm going to open deaf ears. I'm going to deal with MS. I'm going to deal with insanities. The Lord says, get ready. I'm going to release new kinds of visitations. I'm going to take you into that smoky black realm of God. What I keep seeing, seeing is the fear of the Lord. 
What I saw was tent meetings. It was the tent revivals, the opening of ancient wells of the tent revivals. Lord says he's going to birth it. There is a new anointing, and it's tabernacling. It's an anointing of the tent of meeting. It's houses of prayer on the move. And then the Lord says this, I want you to be hungry. You know, God can save by many or by few. I believe that the, this family that's gathered here over these days, if we will rend our hearts, God will le release mercy, his presence, and his glory right here in our nation's capital. There's no place that's too hard. Jesus is here. My daughter had a dream last night. She's 11 years old. She was dreaming last night that she was in this tent, and the worship began to explode with power. She's 11 years old. She said, Daddy, I dreamed. My friends were there. The glory of God was there. The presence of Jesus was filling, 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 filling our nation's capital. And I want to say, those that are gathered here are content for nothing less. Humanism can't produce it. Even all of our money and our resources are not enough. We're going to gather around the invisible God, and he's going to respond. He's going to respond. We're going to be part of history this week. Many, as they walk this mall, will be healed. Many will be saved. And Jesus... And all of his joy is going to ride upon your worship. Three o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the afternoon, he's going to ride in upon your worship. And I want to read this passage. Colossians. I'm going to proclaim this before all of us and even before the powers of the air. You guys ready? Yeah. He is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you, who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in the body of his flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you've heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven. So we declare today the supremacy, the preeminence of Jesus Christ in all things. We declare it in our songs. We declare it in our worship. You know, I want to say, We're here in the middle of the Feast of Tabernacles. Again, we prayed about these dates, and the Lord led us. We felt the Lord lead us to these dates. We actually pursued them before we realized that they were right in the middle. Can you imagine? God would call us to gather in tents up and down this national mall during the very biblical window where God called his people to gather in tents in their nation's capital by a divine accident. 
We didn't realize it was the 20 year anniversary of Promise Keepers this week. God is setting us up this week. I believe these are going to be tents of glory. And then on October 9th, we're going to get together with Rise Up. Women are going to come from all over this nation. And we're going to see a shift. I want to, just for a moment, I want to invite uh, Papa Lou Engel, if he could come. I love this guy. I'm going to have Lou share for a minute, then we're going to praise him. Proud of David and Waken the Dawn. Can we give a hand to these guys that have carried this on? 17 years ago, I was on this mall with 400,000 young people primarily calling on God. Promise Keepers put a million men washing for Jesus tens and hundreds of thousands. I just want to say today that it's not about the numbers on the ground. It's about the numbers in heaven. The chariots of God are tens of thousands. Come on. Chariots of God are tens of thousands and thousands. Oh, rip the veil. Heaven gathers to the sound of day and night worship. Give a shout to God. <laughs> Psalms, Psalm 68, it's the procession of the ark of God from Sinai to Jerusalem. Brothers and sisters, we've been on a journey of the ark of God moving in America. We've been in a long journey. 20 years ago, 1996, I started a little house of prayer in Pasadena with a boom box. With one or two doing shifts day and night. It seems so weak. Then my dear friend, Mike Bickle, launched a house of prayer in Kansas City, 1999 with a few worshipers and singers. Little did we realize that within 20 years, the world would be filled with day and night worship. This movement is not a fad. It is the welcoming party for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, who dwells in the continuous enswathment of praise and worship on earth as it is in heaven. The ark of God is moving. And when I heard David's vision, Psalm 68, it begins, let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. It's actually what they would shout when they would, in the wilderness, they would take up their tents and the ark of God would begin moving it again. And they would say, oh God, let Yah arise. Oh God, let Yah arise. Brothers and sisters, I'm convinced we're in a Psalm 68 moment. It is not just a parade. It is not just singers and musicians moving together. Because this song actually describes the procession of God. When the saints say, oh yeah, let God arise. The singers and the musicians are leading the way. And then it suddenly says, the chariots of God are tens of thousands and thousands. When you were driving here the last couple of days, when the planes were firing, there were angels over your planes. The chariots of God have been moving here. I believe there is a gathering to release a dwelling place of the Lord. 
Oh, we thank God for the great gatherings, but never in the history of this nation has there been day and night worship for the installment of Jesus as King over this nation. Give a shout to God. It's a boisterous psalm. They say it's the most boisterous praise psalm in the whole Bible. It's in the midst of enemies. Enemies everywhere. But God destroys all of his enemies. He breaks forth against the principalities and powers. For out of the mouth of babes, you've ordained praise to silence the foe and the avenger. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Your glory is chanted in the heavens. And out of the mouth of babes, you've ordained praise to silence the foe and the avenger. Lift up a song for him who is the writer on the clouds. Come on. The Lord is the writer on the clouds. We say not Baal, but God who brings the rain. God, lift up your hands. Cry out. Give us a third great awakening. Pour out the rains of revival. As in the days of Deborah, you reigned and your enemies were swept away. Oh, yeah. Let God arise. Verse 5, a father to the fatherless, a judge of widows, is God in his holy habitation. God makes a home for the lonely. He leads out the prisoners into prosperity. Brothers and sisters, when God begins to proceed with the worship of the saints, it is a justice movement for the widow, for the unborn, for the poor in the inner cities. God is the champion of justice, and he is riding in America for justice for racism to be broken for abortion to be ended for a million adoptions oh yeah let God arise to break sex trafficking oh yeah let God arise oh God when you went forth when you marched through the wilderness the earthquake this is a quotation of Deborah You shed abroad a plentiful rain. On Monday, the Deborahs and the Esthers and all of you were going to gather on Columbus Day, that painful day for the Native Americans, believing that God could turn our pain into a day, a prophetic breakthrough. Come on. It's supposed to rain on that day. Let it rain. And then this great passage, the Lord gives the prophetic command. The women who proclaim the good tidings are a great host. God is raising up women, worshipers, evangelists, intercessors, leaders in every high place of government and education. Oh, Deborah, arise. When war came to the city gates, I, Deborah, arose. Well, I don't have time. It's a great passage. We've seen your procession, the procession of God, my king, into this sanctuary. Today, there's a bigger tent than all these tents. It's the tabernacle of God. We join the worship of heaven for day and night, for he is enthroned on the praises of his people. This is no mere parade. This is no mere procession. Heaven is moving. When a half a million women would gather to this mall, when a half a million people would gather to put a a president in office, We declare today that God's people gather together for the enthronement of the Son of God. Come on. 
We enthrone you on the praises of our people. And so today, I want to join with the Old Testament and the New Testament saints. And I want to say the words that they said when the ark of God began to move. They said, oh God. Oh yeah. Let God arise, said Lift your hands. I want to believe for an anointing right now that the true presence of God is coming to America. A third grade of making a Jesus movement. Declare with me, oh yeah. Let God arise. 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 Give a shout to God. This week, we're going to have thousands, hundreds of singers and musicians. We're going to have songs and prayers that are going to enthrone the Lord. But we felt at this moment, before we launch the tents, we want to come and present our hearts and our bodies as a living sacrifice. How many of you know Jesus wants to inhabit your worship. But how many of you know he's after you? And he's after this nation. And we felt at this moment, as we're going to be commissioning these tents tonight, we want to come right now, and we want to return to the Lord in repentance. We want to give him not just our songs, which we're going to do, because he's prescribed it. He's prescribed that creative worship would fill the earth. Guys, this is a staging ground not just for national revival, but global. I mean, what God's doing is global. But in the midst of all of his global and national purposes, he's got his eyes straight on your heart and straight on my heart. We don't want to be just a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal these four days, do we? Even before this session, before this opening, I was with the Lord this afternoon and I just felt this call from the Holy Spirit to come to full repentance, to, to lay down my life again in sincerity, where it's not just that we're giving God an offering of praise, but it's that we become the offering of praise. We're not just going to do intercession, we're going to give our life as intercession. We're going to become worship. We're going to become intercession. We're going to become walking tabernacles when we leave this mall. 